like I'm a short dude, right? So I'm like, uh, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm typing on Google. I'm like, yo, how's like the average height in Japan? And they're like, oh yeah, it's like five, 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 three. I'm like, oh sick. I'm probably, I'm finally going to be like fucking above somebody. And I get here <laughs> all, and I'm just around all the Japanese dudes fucking and the girls too. They're fucking massive. I was like, what is this? This is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're, they're the- So today at the Starfighter headquarters, we get to have a casuals conversation with Amber Lybrook. Is it Lybrook or is it Lybrook? Lybrook. Lybrook. Where's that from? Yeah. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's German. That's what people tell me. Yeah. Are but you? I, I think- are you? Yeah. Because you're you're a tall girl. You know what I mean? Like the German girls yeah. are. Yeah. My wife's really tall. My wife's like uh, five nine for uh, for, and I'm not that tall. So I spent my time <laughs> over there in Germany. I got to meet my wife over there and I brought her ass over here. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure my last name is German, but the women on my mom's side are pretty tall too. So I think I was just destined to be a tall chick. Oh, hell yeah. I love it. Guys are- It's I'm, cool. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like boy, people always give me shit. They're like, dude, you're, your wife's way taller than you. I'm like, I don't give a shit, dude. Like you scared? My coach, my coach always tells me, he goes, I'm like, man, I'm taller than everybody. Like, dudes are always so short. Like, I, right? I'm always like, man, dudes are so short. And my coach is always like, dude, you're taller than everyone. <laughs> like, get over it. Like, you're taller than everyone. Just I, wish, I wish I was someone where I was a little bit taller because uh, I got over here to Okinawa, Japan. And, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, those are old statistics for sure. I feel like people are just bigger now. Yeah. That's I, I just fucking it just got me a little pissed off when I first got here. I'm like, dude, just just once in my life, let me be a little bit taller for somebody. <laughs> One time. Yeah. Like I but was it's cool. Uh, you got a tall chick that you can like show it off, like haha. Like look at my tall German my, model wife. She she'll she'll rag on me though. You know what I mean? Like I'll be uh, I'll be trying to get some stuff and she'll do it on purpose though. She'll do it on purpose. She'll put something on the higher on because when you open up the shelves, there's a first one, second, and the third, right? And she'll yeah. do the second one on purpose. And she'll be like, oh, can you <laughs> get me this? And I don't think about it, right? I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna go fucking I'm over there like like trying to reach. And then like I look at her and she's like laughing. I'm like, you fucking it's like, Yeah, my my ex was pretty short. I think she, she was like five, 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 four. Mm-hmm. I'm think I'm giving her credit. But yeah, my ex was pretty short. Everyone's <laughs> always short. Credit. Yeah. All right. So I'd like to ask you some questions about uh, the MMA community yourself and uh, training. Um, okay. So how did you find yourself over there at uh, CSA? Um, <clears throat> well, I was a part of a different gym and I fought Megan Anderson for my second pro fight in mm-hmm. Invicta. And it was a bad fight for me and it kind of just exposed me and let me know that where I was at wasn't really healthy for my career wasn't going to level me up so I decided to you know just venture off and Kirian um messaged me and Kirian reached out to me and yeah we we just kind of formed a little bond and time over time I found myself there and once I found a home and a, a footing there I just never left Oh, that's awesome. So uh, I, I see your guys gym through IG and stuff like that. Uh, you guys yeah. have like a little like a like a really tight group over there, which is I think is really cool. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, especially like since the COVID thing and like, you know, everything has changed over COVID. COVID just kind of changed everyone's lives. And the the bond and the family and the team that we're forming at CSA is something that I think that we've always wanted and needed. And we finally got it, you know, Um, the ones that that um, are close and have stayed close. Like we ride for each other, uh, you know, like we are our brother's keeper, our sister's keeper. And, you know, we're in there. We're taking care of each other where everyone's leveling up and it's a nice environment. It's good to walk into the gym and love to be there, like the people there and just, you know, enjoy your day. Yeah. Cause I see it through your guys, IG stores, you know, you guys are always intermingling in each other's IG stores and stuff like that. And I think it's really cool. Like you said, you guys have like a really uh, tight knit family kind of feel. And I for sure see that. I think, and everybody sees that, which is 
awesome in the gym because uh, depending on what kind of gym you go to, uh, I've had the unfortunate uh, instance where I got to go to some gyms and just everybody's just, uh, you know, it's like a dog, like everybody's just a little bit, a little bit mean, yeah. mean yeah. I'm just pussy. I, yeah, you know, like it's taken us a while to really form this, this bond we have on the team, like it, dealing with different people um, always comes with challenges, but we, we all manage really, really well. And um I love my teammates. And I think that that goes around for all of us, like no matter what, like even, even if we have a disagreement, like we love each other, we're in there for each other, we're family and we're just going to work it out and keep working and keep getting better, keep leveling up. Hell yeah. Um, so I got to say something before we, we, uh, well, we already started, but uh, before I, I'm such a fucking hypocrite because when I first like MMA is new, right? Like it's brand yeah. spanking new. Like it's maybe like 20, go back 20, 30, 30 years realistically, right? If you're kind yeah. of the early 90s and stuff like that. But I remember going through a high school, like in a, in middle school, and they them starting to talk about, oh, you know, you're going to, it's like, you know that UFC stuff? I'm like, yeah. It's like, dude, they're going to let girls be in there. And I was like, dude, no way, man. That's bullshit. Like nobody wants to see that. <laughs> but that's like uh -huh. me, like as a 13 year old, right? And I'm just like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I want to see that. I want to see my mom get knocked out. Why would I want to see that? but uh yeah. that's how i figured it but man fucking for sure enough i start watching i'm like yo these girls are bad to the bone like they're fucking out there killing it and then like you don't before that you know you would have like those weird like uh old girls fighting it's like girls in wrestling and like uh just sexy kind of stuff i was like come on man like yeah. that's not what it is but then i saw these girls and these women and like i said it's fairly new so growing up into it i saw these women's skills are like on par with dudes if not better for sure Look that's because women are more technical you always learn that like in training women are more technical so where men like rely on brute strength sometimes um women especially if you're a woman in a gym full of men like you really have to like kind of rely on your technique and i think that's what makes us um differ from the two sometimes you know yeah. like women we're, we're fine-tuning everything like because we have to that's awesome I, I honestly never even thought about that you're completely right because yeah we yeah. You wouldn't have any uh well not that you wouldn't right but uh the brute strength wouldn't come in as handy as it does come for dudes right and just get up from a fucking somebody's choking you out sometimes you pull Derek loose and you just get out of that shit you just stand up it's, you know people can say whatever they want but sometimes strength like it, it's a real thing you know and mm -hmm guys who just whoo, like huck you over and you're like man but you got to make sure you tell them like hey just so you know like you just muscled me like there was there was nothing like you just literally picked me up and put me over so yeah. but yeah but I, for me i love it because it does make me have to use my brain a little bit more you know especially um i'm not a small girl i'm a big girl so i can go with some of like like 35ers, 45er dudes are, are usually like good sizes and fits for me. And, um, and, but I still really have to think about it because I'm not always as strong as everybody. And I have to, you know, figure ways out when yeah. they're just like smashing me to death on the floor. So, yeah, I saw I like your, I, I saw your IG where it's like, where you had like a little bit of a, like a vent where you're like, Hey, it was like about BJJ or it was like, just get up and yeah. strike with me instead of, you know, yeah. I thought that was really funny. Yeah, because I got tapped out. So I go and I uh, spar at Alpha Male. And those guys are like, those guys over there are amazing. Uriah Faber is amazing. The team over there is amazing. Like, they they very much have the same kind of, like, family feel that CSA does. So when we cross train, it's just a beautiful thing. And um, we go over there and get some work. And uh, I got tapped out, like, five times by, a, like, it's this Aussie kid. He's 18. His name's Isaac. He's just a stud. Like he's so good. And he tapped me out like five times. And I just left there like, man, like, what am I going to do? Like, I got to come back with something like I can't just, you know, but it's always like, it's great to work with those guys. Cause they're so talented. All of them. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> so what keeps you at CSA? Like you said, you're talking about, is it more of a, is, is it a little bit of everything? like the camaraderie, the family? Um, 
because CSA is my home. Like that's my home. That's where I'm at. Like I trust Kieran Fitzgibbons, my head coach and MJ, who is um, the other owner of CSA, who isn't always in the spotlight, but he's a very big part of my life. Like I trust those two with my life and I wouldn't want to do this journey or anything without them, you know? And um, I love it there. I love CSA. I want to be there and I want to continue the legacy. I want CSA to grow. I want to grow with it. And yeah, like that's home. That's it. Like, and it's the best striking gym in the world. Like I get everything I need and yeah. carrying coach K is always making sure that like, as a team, like we have that, you know, and when he brought in El Nino and Gilbert Melendez, like, you know, these are the things that, that keep me to him. Cause he never thinks that, Oh, I got it all. I know it all. I can do this. I can do that. Like he knows, like he brings in the best, like he brings in the best for us and he'll go to ends lengths for any of us. And, you know, I'll always be loyal to him. Yeah. He also led the like 2008, 2009 Olympic, uh, uh, U S Muay Thai team, right? Correct. Yeah. I see. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, he, he's been a part of the game forever, you know, like if you're a part of Muay Thai, MMA, kickboxing, like, you know, who Coach K is for sure. Yeah. And how'd you get started with, uh, you know, how'd you find yourself starting MMA? Like, like it said, it's, it's, re it's relatively new, you know, people go into the sport and you see like the big names through Bellator and uh, UFC, right? But like, growing up, what was it for you? What got you into it? Because it was like, a, we covered it was relatively new. Well, I knew nothing really about fighting. Like I knew that like, people boxed. I knew there was like fighting, but I didn't really know much. And like earlier when I mentioned um, my ex, when I met her, she was a fighter, but I didn't really like understand what that meant. And then she started to kind of bring me around the gym and stuff like that. And um, I just started like pretty much like most people, I started doing these fitness classes with her at like 6 a.m. And then she was teaching these striking classes. So I started to like, you know, join in for her classes or whatever. And then I started to do jujitsu. And when I started to do jujitsu, that was where it kind of um, clicked for me. You know, that's most people think I'm just a striker, but I started in jujitsu. Like I spent oh. years of just doing jujitsu in the beginning. Um, and then me and my ex broke up the first time. And when that happened, like I was, you know, going through it so I just indulged myself and got obsessed with competing in jiu-jitsu and I competed a lot and I did really 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 well from like white belt to blue up until I stopped competing I always did really well in jiu-jitsu tournaments and I was like well if I'm doing this well doing this like let's level it up and I just kind of got obsessed with like that like leveling it up and like getting better and doing better and fighting and previous interview I, you had mentioned that you had worked with uh children who uh who deal with autism and also with yeah. learning disabilities that's amazing uh my son has uh he had dyslexia growing up has it and um he was really hard for us to understand like any any uh disability like of any kind is really hard for your parents to understand so i admire it a lot when i see people who uh, help children out with any learning disability or any uh condition or stuff because it's as a parent it's hard so and then yeah. i understand that there's absolutely no need for somebody who uh who it's not your kid to uh to be helping those people out like that's that's really great stuff but yeah uh, can you please talk yeah. about that yeah, you know, um, I there there used to be a program at CSA where you know uh, they taught people with autism fitness, and you know that's kind of where I learned everything from. It's an amazing program. Um, it really inspired me, and it really uh, got my wheels turning of what I wanted to do. So when that program left CSA, you know, and moved on or whatever. Um, I was kind of left with like, oh, well, like, um, you know, what do I, and I had before the, before COVID and whatever, I had already decided that I was going to stop working for that company anyways. But um, then when COVID happened, they, the company moved away anyways. So um, after like six months or something, I was like, man, you know, I kind of really miss what I was doing. Like, it's very fulfilling to um, give back to people like that. So, hey, like, maybe I want to like kind of start thinking about doing my own thing again. And 
right now it's hard with COVID right. and I am super busy, especially with fight camp starting and stuff like that. So my clientele, I'm keeping kind of like short right now, um, just because it's hard to manage all my time and I do do a lot. So, um, I'm having, um, I'm not like rushing to like build like this huge program, but it's something I do definitely want to do. And when I get a little bit more time, like after I fight and, uh, you know, kind of get that back rolling, I'm, I'm really going to start to kind of sit down and, and, uh, put a little bit more effort into it. That's amazing. Any, anything like that, like I said, it's a selfless, it's a thankless job, right? Like not, nobody really uh, considers that kind of stuff until you are some part, uh, are in some way in that community also. So for you to be doing that, it's amazing. Uh, and I oh, see I that you're my all, client. I oh, love yeah. my client. Uh, they're, they're amazing. And they always make me feel better. Even like, you know, no matter how hard of a day, like they could be have, or I'm having, like, you, you never know, like how hard of a day they're always having. So it always makes me like very grateful for the life I live. So, Oh yeah. Know. Fucking tears right here. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, with, with, when it was with my kid, I could so hard and all stuff to deal with that. You don't understand anything and it's harder for them to understand. Right. So you, yeah. you like that makes you grow as a person, puts you a little, puts more compassion in you. For sure. For sure. Uh, I also yeah. see that you're training little girls always hit uh, with the mitts and stuff like that. Uh, what's that for? Yeah. Uh, that's just, that's a little girl that I work with. Uh, her dad reached out to me. They know, um, and, uh, one of the owners from the gym and reached out to me and, you know, see if I do some privates with her. I got another little teenage girl. I also do privates with, she just doesn't let me video record her. So I don't get to post and brag about her, but I run the whole kids program at CSA right now. So I've always got 15, 16 kids right now. Like, that I take care of pretty much Monday through Friday. I used to do, there used to be a lot more before COVID we'd have a class of like 30, 35. Um, so we're about at half right now, but it's still good to see the kids kind of back to norm and kind of just doing their thing. California's lifted a lot of restrictions. So it's getting a little bit easier to kind of get things rolling, but yeah, I love what I do. What do you like I to love teach them, the kids? Though, uh, I teach the kids. Uh, we have a kids curriculum at CSA for them in Muay Thai, striking, kickboxing. And then I also teach them uh, CrossFit. So a few really? days a week is CrossFit. Yeah, the rest of the days is uh, Muay Thai, MMA, whatever. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how our weeks go. That's what we do. That's awesome. And uh, for somebody who's coming up like as, as a new fighter, you know, are there any time, are there any tips that you would give, especially for new female fighters? Just stay with it. Stick with it. It's hard. It's hard being an amateur because you got to train, you got to work, you got to do this, you got to do that. You know, even like most pros, like still work day jobs, but it's hard. Just stick with it, stick with it. Like keep fighting. Um, even on the bad days, like not every day is going to be perfect. You just got to keep pushing. I, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of that more lately. Uh, even people who are full time fighters, you know, they have to maintain that uh, part time job. Um, what do you think about that? Like, is it you think it's like a little bit? Does it deter people from doing that? Uh, does it? Uh, obviously, you're going to stay in it because you love it. You know, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, sometimes man, man or woman, sometimes, yeah, as yeah. an amateur, a lot of a lot of people don't make it because they can't juggle the two. You know, um, it's hard to put you're everything into something that's not paying you, you know? So as an amateur, yeah, it's real hard. It's real hard to, to want that. Like, does your love, you know, really is the love really there that you're just willing to sacrifice everything for pretty much nothing except the glory of fighting at that point, you know, like, of course you're building up, but that's a while till you get somewhere. So yeah, it's hard. It is hard everyone um, thinks it's easy oh, i'm just gonna be a fighter It'd be the next best thing but don't work like that yeah who are your favorite people in the gym my favorite people in the gym everybody everybody um right. yeah of course everybody but no like i spend the most time with coach kirian and mj because I work there, you know, so on top of training there, fighting there, I work there. And yeah, those are two of my favorite people. And Coach Kirian's wife, Jessica Fitzgibbons, those are pretty much my favorite people. Um, everybody knows Jesse Jess is my favorite person in just life. That's like my best friend. So 
Yeah, but I love everybody. Gaston is always my brother. It, it's it's hard right now to be like, who's my like favorite people? Because I'm just we're all blast just, that way. Fucking they, that way. No, it's yeah. cool. It's cool. But we're all just vibing. You know, we're all vibing. And every day we're all each other's favorite people. So, yeah. And going into your next fight, you said it's around me. Yeah, that's what we're hoping for. Do you have? We're just a- waiting for them to figure it out. Also, you don't have an opponent lined up? No, I don't have no, no details yet. You know, they just call us, tell us, hey, this is what we're thinking. This is what we want to do. Um, you know, be ready. And that's what we do. Okay, let's say if you weren't. Let them figure it, the details out. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Is there anybody that you'd love to fight? Like if you could just I, make on anybody. No, like I just want to fight, you know, I want to fight worthy opponents. I want to build my record and I want to get back to Bellator when I get to Bellator. Of course, I want to redeem some losses that I feel like I really fucked up and I shouldn't have lost. So like that's going to be first things first. But other than that, you know, my goal right now is just to get to Bellator or UFC, wherever this is going to take me, you know, um, you know, I do got some things in Bellator that I, I would like to do again. But, yeah, that's what what we're doing right now. That's great. What did you learn from your last fights? You said that you want to redeem some stuff in Bellator. Have you gone back and watched those fights? Yeah. Bellator just posted one today. Um, yeah, you know, I've spent a long time, like, anybody – um any fighter who's dealt with multiple losses like back to back will tell Mm -hmm. you like even dealing with just one loss like when you don't get to redeem that and like fix some mistakes and for me it happened multiple times so it's just this big dark cloud that's just been weighing over my head for a while um and with covid and all that like i really haven't been able to do anything but dissect myself and fix everything you know And, and And COVID was a curse and a blessing because it gave me a lot of time to do that. Like I fixed my wrestling, you know, my grappling, I'm, I'm striking better than I ever have. I'm blending it better than I ever have. I'm I'm wrestling better than I ever have. And these are a lot of things that we're missing. And my mental game is completely different. Like my mind is different and I'm, I'm no longer I'm no longer working against myself. I'm now with myself and it's going to be a problem when I get back in there because now it's me and me versus them when before it was me versus me and them, you know, and it's not like that no more. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome to hear. Why do you say it was you, you and you versus somebody else? Well, because, you know, a lot of doubt comes in, especially for me, like Mm -hmm. I, I never had an amateur career. I didn't go through the regional circuit as a pro. Like I started and I went full force, you know, Invicta, Bellator, boom, that's where I was. And Bellator exposed a lot of things for me. Like I didn't believe I belonged in there with those girls. I didn't believe I was was able to do it. I, I all my self-doubts, my insecurities, you know, they all came forth right then and there and it it forced me to really fix myself and fix a lot of things in my life change a lot of things in my life change a lot of things with me take a lot of accountability and just be like hey you know like you do belong in there and this is why and so I took a long time and I did a lot of work still doing a lot of work every day but yeah we're we're coming we're coming guns blazing amber 2.0 no, I love I love it. You know, for somebody to be so uh, transparent like that and say and talk about insecurities and down and stuff like that, it takes a lot within itself. So some people have uh, the downfall of just not ever acknowledging it in any aspect of life, realistically, right? You just you fail and you you never own up to it. You never see it or anything like that. And realistically, I anything anybody says about uh, failing on stuff, that's such a one dimensional thing when you just say there's not you you fail when you quit you know what i mean you fail when you stop and all that stuff that's the only time you really fucking quit doing anything in any aspect of life so it's great that uh I'm, you're hearing that i'm hearing you dissect that stuff and just the the fucking the fire's burning and stuff Same. like that so that's awesome. um so i think that's gonna be doing it for us uh again thank you for your okay. time and uh yeah. i can't wait to see i can't wait to see more from you i love the training I followed you uh, because I just see the fire in there. I see the fire. I see the training and all stuff. Like I said, not a lot of people could do it and all that stuff. And I hope nothing for the best for you. And again, Thank if you'd you. like to do this another time, I'd love to have you on. Maybe dissect yeah, it. maybe once I get some more details on the fight, let's do it again. 
Oh, hundred percent. Again, thank you. And uh, I'll, thank see, you. I'll see you. Soon. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Appreciate you.